Hello everyone. Today we continue with computer system architecture course, chapter five, basic computer organization and design. In the last meeting, we discussed instruction codes, instruction parts, operation code part and address part, stored the program organization, immediate, direct, and indirect address sync, basic computer registers and memory. We start on this screen, the list of registers for the basic computer. In the basic computer, we have eight registers, data register, accumulator, instruction register, and temporary register, are of size 16 bits each. Address register and program counter are of size 12 bits each, since they are used to address any of the 4,096 memory locations. And two remaining registers, the input register and output register of size eight bits each, and they are used for inputting or outputting one character at a time. In this section, we have one remaining item, common bus system. In the basic computer and in any general purpose computer, Paths must be provided to connect all the registers to each other and to connect the registers and memory unit. If the register size is n bits, 0 to n minus 1, and if we have m registers, and if we use the wiring approach, connect all the registers and memory unit through wires, then we need n multiplied by m multiplied by m minus one over two wires without considering a self feedback from the register to itself. In this case, the number of wires will be excessive or very large, and the design of the circuit will be very complex. For example, if we have 64 registers, each of size 16 bits, then we need 32,256 wires in order to connect all these registers only together without considering the memory connections and without considering the self connections. A more efficient scheme for transferring information in the system is to use a common bus. According to this approach, we have a common bus memory and register one, register two, register N, the memory unit, and all the registers are connected to the common bus. Here we have read, write. In the basic computer, the bus size should be equal to any register size and to the size of any memory location. In the basic computer, the bus size is 16 bits, or there are 16 wires, yeah, 16 wires in the bus. In order to select the memory unit or a particular register, selection lines are used. In the basic computer, we have eight elements. We need three selection lines, S2, S1, S0. And if a general purpose computer contains, for example, 64 registers with memory unit, then we need six selection lines. The lines from the common bus are connected to the inputs of each register and the data inputs of memory here. The bus contents are placed into a register whose load input is enabled. Here we have load. So registers should have a load input. The memory receives the contents of the bus when its write input is activated and it places its contents onto the bus when the read input is activated. So if we want to read or write from memory, first we have to select the memory unit, and in the basic computer, the selection lines are 
111 for the memory. On the right operation, right control signal is activated, allowing the contents of the bus to be stored on the address memory location. On the read operation, again, memory should be selected. The read control should be activated. In this case, the contents of the address memory location by the address register is transferred to the bus. Here is the common bus system in the basic computer. As you see, we have a memory unit with 4096 location, each of size 16 bits. The read and write control signals. The output of the address register are connected to the address inputs of the memory unit and the select signals for the memory unit, R111. The outputs of seven registers and memory are connected to the common bus. The specific output that is selected for the bus is determined by the binary value of the selection variables S2, S1, S0. For example, to place the contents of the bus into the data register, then the selection variables should be 0, 1, 1. And the load input is activated in this register, allowing the contents of the bus to be transferred only to the data register. In this case, the contents of other registers are unchanged. Here we have two registers, the input register and the output register. The input register is sourced to the bus while the output register is destination from the bus. The contents of the input register are received from an output device and transferred to the accumulator through the other and logic circuit. The size of the bus is 16 bits, but the size of the input register and output register are eight bits each. For this reason, input and output registers communicate with the eight least significant bits of the bus. For example, if the output register is concerned, then only the eight least significant bits of the bus are transferred to the output register. Usually the output register receives a character from the accumulator and derives it later to the output device. And there is no transfer from the out register to any other register. Five registers have three control inputs, load, increment, and clear. This type of register is equivalent to a binary counter with parallel load and synchronous clear. Two registers the instruction register and the output register have only a load input. No need for the input register to have a load input. In this configuration, the address inputs of the memory unit are connected only with the outputs of the address register. And by using a single register for the address, we eliminate the need for an address bus that would have been needed otherwise. So according to this configuration, memory can be addressed only through the address register. The address of the next instruction is usually stored in the program counter. So the contents of the program counter should be transferred to the address register first. To read an operand, the address of the operand should be transferred to the address register and then the operand is read from memory. The 16 inputs of accumulator come from an adder and logic circuit. This circuit has a set of three inputs. One from the accumulator here and one from input register and the third from the output of data register. Note that the content of any register 
can be applied onto the bus and an operation can be performed in the other analogic circuit during the same clock cycle. For example, the two micro operations transfer the contents of accumulator to DR and DR to accumulator. They can be executed at the same time. This can be done by loading the contents of accumulator into the bus, select 100, enabling the load input of data register, allowing data register to receive the contents of the bus, transferring the content of data register through the adder and logic circuit, and enabling the load input of the accumulator, all during the same clock cycle. The two transfers occur upon the arrival of the clock pulse transition at the end of the clock cycle. One final note, since the bus size is 16 bits and we have the address register and the program counter of size 12 bits each, since they are used to address memory. When the contents of any of these registers, address register or a program counter are applied to the bus, the four most significant bits of the bus are set to zeros. And in the case of any of these registers, address register or program counter, is destination, here the bus size 16, but in any of these, the size is 12. In this case, only the 12 least significant bits are transferred to one of these registers. I'll stop here today. We are done with the first two sections in this chapter. In the next meeting, we start computer instructions. For today, that's all. Thank you.